Hello everybody, welcome back to the L1 show. Today's October 11th and we're doing government and security links for you to share with your friends. A lot of government news this week, a lot of uh, Q3's not over yet, but there's also a lot of business news as well. Yeah, you know, Chris, so you shouldn't limit them. They could share these with their enemies as well. They could, yeah. Imagine the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> like your childhood bully and they're like, oh, the guy messaged me out of the nowhere. He didn't ask for an apology or anything. He just sent me this weird show. Now, I was a little crunched for time today, so I didn't have time to look it up, but I've read two articles so far, and they both illustrate in this article that there are five distinct, like, Asimov rules for the AI. <laughs> Neither of them yeah. enumerated them. Did you find them anywhere? No. Mm -hmm. why, why are they keeping that a secret? <laughs> White House unveils Artificial Intelligence Bill of Rights. Now, the rules are described as wanting to protect privacy and keeping users in control of their data, but I've got some bad news. Cambridge Analytica didn't require whatever this AI bill is going to protect against. Oh, this is completely nothing, Burger. If you go to the bottom, it's like, well, yeah, this doesn't have any actual power to stop anybody and uh, didn't specifically express AI-powered technologies funded through the Department of Justice. Uh, I was okay with it being a nothing, Burger, until I got to the part where they spent a year working on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like something you throw out in a week. It's like, well, we need something. We need to show them some sort of progress on this call. So yeah, I mean, I was imagining like Biden wakes, like he read some doom, did some you know quality doom scrolling before bed. He gets up and he's like, we got to rein in these tech companies with AI. We need to do something. And then you know by 10 a.m. we've got the press release for this. No, this was a year long process. They some intern should have just emailed this overnight. Well, they didn't even tell us. Imagine if a group of doctors got together and I was like, listen, you guys spend a year and tell me what I need to do to improve my health. And instead of coming back with like actual suggestions, like, well, you should lose some weight. Maybe, you know, be a little more active. You should eat better. They're just like, no, be more healthy. Just, <laughs> just be healthier. Like, just sir, have more money. Uh, sir, the, the rate of liver failure, just complete and to total liver failure among the population has shot up 300% in the last 10 years. What do we do? Let's make a press release. Okay, that's great. And the press release is liver failure is bad. <laughs> Become, get your liver healthier. But no ways in which to do that. We got five simple rules for you to make your liver more healthy. And then this, this, this is a listicle this, just doesn't populate. They don't even <laughs> like this. Just come on. And the Supreme Court is back from their much needed break. I mean, oh, they are yeah. hard working people. But to be fair, they all are basically corpses at this point. Right. So they do need a lot of time off, but they're back at it. However, this is the time when they decide what they will and they will not look at. And some bad news for the fruit company. <laughs> Apple loses second bid to challenge Qualcomm patents at the U.S. Supreme Court. The first time they challenged it, the court literally said, this is a nothing burger. You guys are insane because you're contemplating future possible harm, not harm right now today. And the second lawsuit was equally insane. Actually, if you want to dig into exactly how hideously soulless Apple is, you really should look at what they did to Qualcomm. Because, you know, business at that scale, it's a little cutthroat. I get it. A little cloak and dagger, little gray area thing. You know, maybe you threaten somebody's kids every now and then. Yeah, you know, that's. But what Apple did here was completely insane. The uh, opposing counsel called it materially identical to the previous one. The court agreed. <laughs> But also, like, how, you know, the, the, if Apple is doing that to Qualcomm, which is an absurdly huge company, imagine how roughshod they are running over any other smaller company that they deal with. We've Truly seen, horrifying. We've certainly seen some examples. And the FCC uh, doing something that just begs the question of how did this take what well, we've been this for a decade years. literally years it's we've done six, stories about this years for ages six seven years at least right yeah. my favorite been... story my favorite part of the story is that one of the telecommunications companies is, is like arkansas southwest yeah. <laughs> so, so that, specific you know what so like arkansas visually because i watch a lot of arkansas police chase videos is you cannot tell the difference between that and eastern kentucky yeah it's just yeah. mountainous regions so you know they got the same kind of thing we do which is a telco which owns everything. Well, like you, Appalachian Wireless. This may be, you know, uh, this is bad because you four channel piece things together. But do you remember the Walmart that went under and became a call center and was investigated by the FCC? And because they were doing all kinds of illegal things. But it turns out if you run a call center in the same telecommunications company as the one that it's spam calling, 
that's actually okay. There's a 10 year plus long court case where it's like, no, we're just calling our own customers or we're allowing outside companies to call and harass our companies. That's kind of what was happening with the Arkansas How company. How can you be against jobs? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also to completely derail this article and like never get to the headline, they're also doing, doing the flooding, rip, AT&T is ripping out all the copper yeah. in those mountains. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just, they're just taking the meth heads game and going bigger. And I thought, oh, they're going to run fiber. That just seems impossible. Up in all the haulers, there's no way. It turns out, no, they're not doing that. They're going for the wireless boxes on the houses, which will not work. <laughs> there is no wireless signal in those mountains. Anyway, the FCC... After all of this misery, is focusing on one tiny complaint and all of this madness. FCC threatens to block calls from carriers for letting robocalls run rampant. And there are seven companies that have two weeks to address the agency's concerns. Spoiler alert, they're not going to address the agency's concern. And it's like, well, you know, other, other telecommunications companies may not be able to route calls through those communications companies. Yeah, and their customers will suffer. Yeah. It's, it's going to be... Real, I think the rural experience is going to get real bad during the economic downturn. Yeah, especially with the wireless, because when a disaster happens, everybody tries to use the wireless at the same time, which then works for no one. And then you can't call the emergency services who can't take you to the hospital because now it's two counties away because yeah. all the hospitals are shut down because yeah. of economic collapse. It's looking bad. That's, I mean, that's already happened from where we are. Yeah. It'll get worse. Uh. And, uh, Facial recognition, of course, is, I'm afraid, uh, not going anywhere. It's here. <laughs> it's so easy to use. And the powers that be are starting to recognize this. They are so late. So yeah. late to this party. House Democrats built a uh, debut a new bill to limit the U.S. police use of facial recognition. This is uh, still falls well short of how protected your VHS rental records are. So you're going to have to have a warrant. You are not allowed to use facial recognition as the sole purpose for arresting somebody or bringing them in for questioning. Now, of course, we've seen with uh, the purchasing of data, they can get around that. Yeah. I always forget parallel construction. Right? Yeah, they have in the past gotten around that. So that it doesn't help at all. And then there's some more limitations on um, like they have to give public records of when they used AI and stuff like that. Again, they just won't put it in the case. The examples that we're citing are uh, like Michigan. A lot of the Detroit police, for example, have already done an in run around all of the concerns that are raised in this article. The, you know, it would be nice if we had a little bit of investigative journalism that would go dig into, you know, just it's like, here's all the protections that we built in. And it's like, as a journalist, I found all these examples of where those types of protections had been defeated by local police departments <laughs> because these things already existed at a state level as opposed to a federal level. And just because it doesn't work, reliably or it gets a lot of false positives they don't care at all about that here's a little bit thing that i learned this week so i've been watching as i said constantly police interrogations they use something called the read technique now i learned the history of the read technique which is fascinating the read technique came about because they, we passed laws that you weren't allowed to beat prisoners and they're like well if we can't beat the prisoners how are we going to get a confession <laughs> so they came up with this really coercive horrible thing psychological manipulation and the guy who invented it, his name was reed and he became very famous because he got this guy to admit killing his wife and nobody else could get him to admit it. He was staunchly like, I did not do this. So they locked him up for life and the read technique proliferated across the country. It became incredibly famous and everybody uses it. A couple of years later, DNA evidence or no, maybe that wasn't did. I don't know. Another guy admitted to the killing. It was a false confession the entire time. They had to pay him $500,000, which in today's money would be as of 1955, probably like what? 3 million. Something like that, but we still use it. What, um, is it. what does it do? Can you explain it in greater depth? It breaks you down psychologically. Right. They put you in a cold room. They leave you there. They let you get really like frustrated. Yeah. Then they come in and they're your buddy. And then 30 minutes after that, they turn on you. And that just breaks most people. Like huh. they can't handle it. It's fascinating to watch. Watch interrogation videos and, and then learn to never talk to them. Uh. Yes, supercomputing. That's a big thing. We've just learned about some new supercomputers that have hit the U.S., but it's always been an arms race with China, and we want to win that arms race by not giving them bullets. U.S. said to plan new limits on China's AI and supercomputing firms. 
this is not the limits that we covered last week or the week before, the ones that negatively impacted both NVIDIA and AMD's bottom line in terms of being able to sell stuff. This is new. So this, they admit like, well, right now this is not gonna be a big deal, but once supercomputing gets to the point where they're actually trying to build a lot of them, instead of just building one and making it good, this will hurt them. As long as we're, you know, blocking these sales for these companies and that and spending money endlessly, maybe we should just take the money and buy the things the companies were gonna sell and then build the thing here. I mean, you know, that's like a decade long process. Well, so. you know. Yeah, we're, better now than never. It would probably be economically beneficial, like highways. It's going to be tough to do that during a time when every company is firing all their employees. Well, they've already committed to build it. You know, it's going to exist. Maybe we can hire all the fired employees and put them on the supercomputer team. Mm. All the D students. Oh, it's so good to see an unelected global entity telling me how that I should live my life. I love that. <laughs> A UN agency wants the Fed to slow its interest rate hikes. Uh, the subtext of this is, if you don't, Credit Suisse is going to go under. And may already be too late. <laughs> Not just them. <laughs> so obviously the Bank of England started this whole thing and they were like, oh, we're going to go until it hurts. And it started hurting almost immediately. <laughs> so, uh, and we also have, uh, I think if I did the math... I can't remember what the math is, but just like 1% of our debt right now annually is astonishing what we would pay on that. And we pay more than 1%. Uh, this is has to do with 230 and the whole idea. But the weird thing about this, neither of these things happened on U.S. soil. Mm. So our courts, people are suing our media companies from other countries. I didn't even know you could do that. I mean, that makes sense. High court will hear social media terrorism lawsuits. Okay. So uh, there were a couple of instances here where, you know, it was one of these things where something proliferated on social media and somebody ended up getting killed over it. Not like an American doing anything. I think one of the women was an American in another country. But they're saying without Telegram and Facebook and all this stuff, this would have never happened. So well, I guess it's like kind of like the stories we did about like, India, where they would like mob someone. Indonesia is real bad. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what the other one was. And all that was always organized through Facebook. Myanmar. Yeah. Myanmar is terrible for that kind of thing. So yeah, they're saying, hey, these social media companies are responsible for this. We should be able to sue them in the country where they exist. So the high court is going to, I guess, look at it. Zuckerberg just wants to work on the metaverse and these pesky lawsuits keep getting in the way. And the SEC is always going after the big fish. <laughs> The SEC charges Kim Kardashian for unlawfully touting crypto security. Uh, she, the crypto asset is now worth 97% less than when she touted it. And I think she got 250 K to tout it, but it, they're demanding 1.7 million, 1.6 million, something like that, which she will never, or 1.26 million. She won't even, the accountant will just make it disappear. She'll never even know about it. She probably does not understand this whole process at all yeah. she understands this as much as she understood when they originally came to her and they're like ethereum max yeah it's good you want to say something about it uh here's a quarter million and she's like of course i do is that that matt damon thing i'll do it she uh <laughs> oh she's trying to be a lawyer so obviously she does understand fortune oh. favors the brave what school is she going to uh i don't think she's going to a school i think she's doing like some sort of homeschool sort of thing uh, like homeschool lawyering certain, that's impressive certain yeah. states will let you take the bar yeah um, she's in california and that, it's that kind of thing she can't pass the baby bar though she keeps failing it well of course yeah i mean do you think that she thinks she can do that <laughs> I, apparently i've seen articles about it i mean even if one of us were trying to do that it would be you mean that's how it is in law that's appalling I wouldn't have the memory for that. I don't think to learn all those phrases in the case law. And I, you know, maybe I'm judging Kim Kardashian, but you know, there's a great phrase from, from the band tool, which I love is all you know about me is what I sell you. Mm. And that's true of Kim too. You know I mean? She might be brilliant, but I, I wouldn't think she would have the vocabulary to do that. No. You know? Like she would read those books and they would just be like bouncing off her face. You know? Yeah. Like I said, she hasn't made it yet. I don't think so. You know who my favorite success story is in that vein? Dolph Lundgren. Now, he was smart before the fame, though, right? Yeah, yeah. But he was very good at hiding the smart as a result of the fame. And then it was like, surprise, he's actually brilliant. Good job, sir. 
It didn't help his career. No, no, not at all. <laughs> but I'm sure it came in handy. There might be someone, maybe a better example would be like Dolly Parton, where she kind of yeah. leans into the bimbo image, but she's actually pretty, like, got she's, business acumen. She's but pretty savvy. Her knowledge seems more, like, functional street. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. I know how to play this game. As a woman who's going to be treated like that, I know how to, you know, navigate yeah. that, rather than, you know, like, theoretical physics or law. Mm. She's probably a smart cookie, though. Well, this is an older story. I think we talked about this way back in the day, didn't we? Yeah. And uh, now we're just getting more information about how stupid and ham-fisted it was. <laughs> Covert CIA websites have been found by quote-unquote amateur and amateur research finds. So I thought the Guardian article would have links to these. You can actually find links to some of these if you go digging. Uh, some of them are just straight up WordPress, but then the admin account is like blah, blah, blah at CIA.gov. <laughs> Ooh. And it was worse. You, d- you didn't have to have that kind of information. It was worse because they were all the same and somebody could, somehow they were linked. And if you found one, that could be a seed to uncover all of them. Thanks, WordPress. People did die over this. This Whoa. uncovered some people in China yeah. who were working. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So think about that when the CIA says they want to run all this other stuff. When you get that urgent email late at night and it's like your boss wants to talk to you about something and you open it, does your stomach just drop when it's like, hey, you might have <laughs> accidentally killed some agents with this mistake. <laughs> Did you really use your CIA.gov email as uh, the admin email on the clandestine website? That, really? That's probably not the email. The email is probably like, you didn't use any like of your IP addresses doing this, did you? <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn the VPN on. <sighs> we're going to deny this, by the way. And you are too, if you want to live. Well, uh, you know, we Amazon has the reputation as the Amazon and Walmart. I would say one and two, the big anti-union yeah. guys, you know. But lovable little Apple. <laughs> They're so communist and wonderful, and they're for the people, right? Mm. Apple accused of interrogating pro-union employees by National Labor Review Board in complaint. Now, this is Vice, and you think, oh, interrogating, is it really like that? And then you read the article, and it's like, Apple should have been broken up years ago. <laughs> so specifically it is against the rules i would have never thought this but it's against the rules once you once you kick into the whole like we want a union mode the top guy cannot just fly in and sit you down at a table and be like i think you should rethink this you know because it's like too much power too much intimidation mm-hmm. that's exactly what he did and apple says that these guys had requested that prior to the union thing and they were just fulfilling that request later mm. You think they got a uh, one of those smoking gun, do not sign your card? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was probably my favorite moment from the news th- or the <laughs> show this year. <laughs> You're like, they didn't actually tell them not to do that, right? And then we're scrolling through the images. Oh, that's perfect. And uh, if you were one of those people who's saying like, hey, man, no, this is not a proxy war. There's no, <laughs> there's no proxy war going on here. I think maybe you ought to look at this one. <laughs> The CNN headline is in a bid for new long range rockets. Ukraine offers the US a targeting oversight. I mean, we've basically, both sides have basically already said we have that. But now it's like, well, you know, you can just, it's fine. These, I love the name of these because the high Mars are what they have right now. <laughs> it's high Mars o'clock. These are uh, attackums. <laughs> wow. You what? know, someone is really proud of that acronym. Yeah. Uh, like, I wonder if that's how they actually say it. Because that's, I mean, how else would you read that? And it makes me think of like, oh, stakeums, but missiles. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Attackums. Uh, we should do a, a low, this is way too much Krista effort, but it would be hilarious to do something that's vaguely like the stakeums logo, but is attackums. I bet you that they end up putting it on the. <laughs> Put that on a t shirt. Yeah. yeah. I don't know the stakeums logo, but if you send it to me, I could maybe look into that. Stakeums you know is what? very active on social media. We could do a collaboration. Stay tuned for the. Uh, well, we have to, tr- let's really try to remember this. Stay tuned for the uh, cult of engagement section where we only put it on float 20 Patreon. Oh yeah. And we'll look Except at the Stakem's we logo. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll forget like 10 minutes from now, but we're going to try. The last week was just a tease to show you what you get. <laughs> Definitely not a mistake. The sub rate did go up. <laughs> uh, well, maybe that's how we have to manipulate the algorithm. <laughs> no, no, we, the, we talked about this before we started filming. The way we manipulated the algorithm last week was by saying you don't like anime and to give you anime suggestions oh and then the comments were just like Pfft. so some like five paragraphers yeah in one too. I, I would echo cowboy bebop that's pretty good stand yeah i knew you liked that one it's not long either 
I liked know. Full Metal Alchemist back in the day before it kind of are you over now? You two are doing it. <laughs> I mean, that was like back in high school, but yeah, I liked it. All right, it's all right. we're doing it so people will comment. Me too. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, over in the EU, this has been coming for a long time. They've finally done it. The EU vote has finally, finally paved the way for USB C to be a common device charger in 2024. Never mind that there's 77 types of USB-C. Ultra fast charging, fast charging, 77 watt, 60 watt. We got the GAN microscopic super tiny chargers that can dump 100 watts even though they're super tiny. There's a lot of USB-C options. Do you think, will this happen and will they get smacked for it? Will Apple be like, oh, well, the way, you know, we want to condition the batteries, want to keep the device safe, so we can only allow the latest USB-C for this model. Probably. Not any of the older ones. Proprietary, yeah. And by the way, we'll sell you one for twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Did the latest iPhones have wireless charging? Because for a while, they, Apple was weird about wireless charging, but now I've gotten to the point where I can't live without wireless charging. I think you probably could. Hmm. I think yeah. you'd make it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if the alternative is not having a mobile device, I think you could make it. <laughs> I mean, the USB port on my phone barely works at this point. So getting it to charge through uh, that is just. Uh, it's weird because 2024, I guess January 1st, is when all devices other than laptops, but for laptops, they're giving them more time. Yeah. Makes sense because USB C can't, you know, there are 200 watt laptops out there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I know I understand that this is a, a, a risky domain and everything, but I couldn't find a non paywalls. Well, there wow. are plenty of sources, but they all had paywalls. So now the best thing about this, though, this was a New York Times story, and the day before this New York Times story, New York Times broke the story. The day before they debunked it <laughs> as a right wing conspiracy, and then uh, they had to. True. It's so great. You should read them in order. <laughs> Amazon provides cloud technology for a Chinese military company. Yeah, read the debunking article first, because I'm sure that some people will comment and say, hey, by the way. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. It was the voting company. This is a different one. Oh. Uh, this is uh, maybe I'm so confused because of the paywall alternatives. I didn't. I, so the version of this that I read was that, yes, but it Amazon provides services in the sense that it's like it's S3 and EC2. Like anybody can buy S3 and EC2. So. Who cares? Right. Okay, this is a different one. The argument here is you have to sell China parts right now, I think, right? It has to be physical stuff or offer them some sort of material support. Amazon is saying, like, we, we let whoever wants to host in the cloud. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. And Rubio from Florida is saying, no, that counts as well. I don't think that should count. I guess we're going to find out. And over in China, you know they love censorship. Now, those that the Chinese that love to live on the edge, maybe the Chinese Wendels, <laughs> risk it all with the VPN. And the Communist Party has says no more. <laughs> Popular censorship circumvention tools face fresh blockade in China. They are clamping down. Um, they're actually routing a lot of things through Hong Kong, and then I think they're probably going to clamp down on those routes through Hong Kong. So they're blocking the default TLS port if you're trying to have a tunnel. Now you think to yourself, well, I can change the port easily enough. If you do that, your IP will kind of just stop working. So maybe just like get a new IP and then keep cat and mousing it with that. Probably also would end up badly for you. Not ideal. All right. So you say you can't live without wireless charging. What would you do? Uh, I would have already gone insane. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to think that most of these people probably don't have a lot of options for leaving, right? Yeah. Uh, six million silence, a two-year internet outage in Ethiopia. This is really depressing because it was, what was it, an Olympic gold medal winner? Hasn't been able to talk to her parents over like Skype or Zoom or something because the internet's blocked? Because a little bit of a coup thing going on there? Uh, I don't, well, it wasn't. We're definitely not having Olympics right now. I think she just broke a world record. Oh, okay. So she was not able to call her parents and be like, hey, I'm number one in the world at whatever sport this is. Uh -huh. And she went further to say, you know, the interviewer was like, oh, that's terrible. You can't talk to them. And she's like, I also don't know if they're dead or not. Because, mm. you know, there's civil war happening. I think there's some real risk of famine in several parts of Africa this year because of the grain shortages as well. Just sad. I think there's risk of famine in a lot of places. Yeah. yeah. Well, the uh, the Uber story maybe is finally wrapping up. 
in terms of their terrible breach that they did the worst possible thing to deal with. Former Uber security chief convicted for concealing a felony. Wow. I think he got, I, I don't think he should have handled it like he did, but I think this is a little extreme. So the argument is they got hacked. He reached out to the hackers. Instead of paying the ransom, he was like, don't do it that way. Go to the bug bounty. I'm going to take care of you and we'll never involve the cops. So the authorities are saying, you knew it was a crime. You knew that you should tell us about the crime because we're taking this very seriously now. And you instead hid it from us. All true, mm. but... I'm pretty sure that's what the board and the executives directed him to do, though. You think there's ever been a case like that before? <laughs> uh, Equifax? But they... They eventually came clean. They didn't, like, do the bug bounty thing. Yeah, yeah. They just straight up tried to hide it. Yeah. Although he got a worse... Wasn't that worse? Yeah. 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 That doesn't make any sense. And, unfortunately, because we have the new, you know, like hierarchy of oppression when they do catch you at things like this they might just slap you on the wrist seattle woman gets probation for massive capital one hack okay not gonna touch it neither will i read the article <laughs> yeah i didn't really want to start there. <laughs> sorry this is the one i was talking about from the new york times oh, oh and it is from the new york times election software executive arrested on suspicion of theft uh, Eugene Yu and his firm Connick have uh, the focus of the attention among the election deniers. So the, yeah, this is a little spicy. A little spicy. Now the election deniers were saying this crazy stuff about him storing stuff in China, which was right wing conspiracy, until they found the stuff in China. And then it was like, <laughs> oh, ah, that's inconvenient for the narrative. And this is Gascon, the uh, or Gascon. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Never seen. You know the the a word you read but never say out loud. The guy who won't prosecute anything. And in his press release, instead of being like, "Yeah, we got this guy off the streets," he was like, "This was only poll worker data. This had nothing to do with the votes." <laughs> Let me reiterate: nothing to do with the votes. It's also the same guy that said there was nothing in China. Yeah, in the same paper. Yeah, that and very condescending. They haven't taken that article down. I guess they just you know they're too afraid to do that because. <laughs> How obvious, it looks worse, yeah. but go read that article. It's amazing. And I believe uh, now in the, in the old days, I think we got it wrong, or at least I did at one point. I thought Zell was buy now, pay later. I thought that was, I also day. thought that was the case, but it's just person to person mm. transfers. Like it's their answer to Bitcoin basically. And when we heard about it, I remember thinking like, oh, that is going to be so much fraud. Yeah. So much fraud and scam cases increasing on Zell Senate report finds. Yeah, even Craigslist is awash with things. It's like, hey, do you want to meet in the police parking lot, which has the designated Craigslist exchange spot because it's a shorter drive for both of us? I'll bring cash. And they're like, no. It's like, hmm. There was a crazy percentage. I think it was like 47% of people who get scammed through Zelle, even though it's through their bank account. Uh, never. Oh, yeah. Well, 47% of the dollars, not the people. Never reimbursed. Wow. Just gone. If a lot of people are facing economic hardship, it gets real bad real fast. You oh. think I'll have to put like a legal disclaimer on it? That's like you meet with these people, exchange cash with them at your own risk. Well, you don't have to, this is online. Yeah. But I'm right. saying like, like marketplace doesn't have anything like that, but I wonder if that's, they're going to have to have a disclaimer like that somewhere. Craigslist probably been sued, right? Yeah. 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 Craigslist is, is, you know, use your town's secure exchange. And I'm surprised, you know, all the, the local, there's one on campus and there's one at the police station and it's just, you know, this area of the parking lot is designated for Craigslist exchanges. You think anybody's ever bought and sold meth at the police Craigslist exchange? <laughs> I'm sure that that's probably. <laughs> one of those weird baby dolls I found on marketplace yeah. a long time ago was the avatar doll. <laughs> That'd be funny if the cops, you know, they, for sure there's a microphone and a camera out there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, like, they see people being suspicious, and they're like, oh, they're being real suspicious with the check, and it's just Avatar dolls. Oh. They're, just, they're just embarrassed. <laughs> it's like, is this, is this counterfeit? Is this they're, they're realistic. They pee? <laughs> <laughs> well, another slap on the wrist. Now, this is a big number, yeah, but think about what they got from this. Google settles Arizona location data suit for $85 million. This was when you turn off your location thing on your phone, it turns it off for you. It doesn't turn it off for, for Google. Everybody, yeah. And they use that to sell ads really effectively, which they have proven. 
So they probably made money here. Joy. LAUSD is Los Angeles Unified School Districts. So hacking schools, yes, is that big money? Well, maybe not in Los Angeles, but when the hackers don't get their way, they lash out. Hackers leak 500 gigabytes of stolen data from the LA school district in a ransomware attack. Okay. It, the list of stuff is pretty substantial. Like, uh, uh, contract and legal documents, financial reports, bank account details, health information, including their, you know, the thing test results. Uh, previous conviction reports and psychological assessments of students. Ooh, that's HIPAA. Yeah. Ouch. That shouldn't have been with the school district. And like, was that just all on a shared network drive together? Because that's that suggests a lot of bad things about their architecture. Also, why is the LA school district psychologically evaluating their students? <laughs> Probably if the kid gets reported for something. Mass shootings. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Well, uh, we had the big Optus hack. And well, no, let's not call it a hack, right? It was yeah. just bad, bad programming. And uh, that happened in Australia. This person was not directly involved, as far as we know, just a, an opportunist, but really poorly done, this one. Teen charged with attempting to blackmail Optus customers using stolen data. It's not great. Since the API was open, you know, it could be argued the teen didn't really commit a crime until they started blackmailing people. And it's like, <laughs> well, that's, that's going to be a little bit more rough. Uh, that's not going to work out for you. So this person took uh, text messages that were part of the leak, texted them from their own phone, told them to deposit money in their own bank account, or they would release the data, which had already been released. <laughs> Do you think the parents heard the details of this and they were like, I knew we shouldn't have gotten him that damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Mary. If, it, if, the, if this kid's got a good defense attorney, one defense could be, it's like, I wasn't actually intending to blackmail them. I was trying to raise awareness of the hack because that's why they were depositing money in their own bank account. But once someone deposited any money at all, that goes out the window. Well, yeah. if they deposited it in their own bank account. No, he was asking for his bank account. Yeah. Oh. Them his, yeah. I yeah. Like, that. That's the stupidity of this guy. Yeah. I think it was a guy. Uh, you know, once like he didn't try to hide his identity via the phone number or the bank account. Mm. Well, this one is a bit of a an incendiary headline, but it all starts with a, a single step, right? The March of a Thousand Miles. The PS5 has reportedly been jailbroken. A limited but seemingly legitimate exploit has been discovered. Perhaps from this, we can discover the other encryption keys buried in the PS5 and fully unlock it. Much like the Switch, this only works on a specific firmware. So, valuable PS5s, check your firmware. Why is the PS5 more secure than a Hyundai? Assuming you can even get a PS5 right now. <laughs> I, Are they getting more yeah, available? Yeah, because no one wants to buy anything. Uh, mm. I know last Christmas my cousin was looking all over for one and couldn't find it. Well, sure. Unless it was like, you know, someone selling it for twice what it's worth. There'll be no problem getting one this Christmas. Uh. <laughs> Just don't, you know, like uh, in some bad neighborhoods, they say don't ever put the TV box out by the curb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't put the PS5 box out by the curb. Well, Denmark, uh, they have a very cozy relationship with the copyright holders. They kind of let them do whatever they want, which is sad. Danish pirate site blocking updated. Telecoms Group publishes all the domains. It's a lot. This is a little bit more transparency, I guess, which is nice. But it just points out that, boy, are they blocking a lot. And uh, they do point out that a massive percentage comes from like 400 domains, which are known, I guess, torrent trackers and stuff like that. But yeah, they have a lot of unpleasant rules going on over there with copyright. You would think that we would be the worst in terms of copyright, what with our, you know, Disney's and so forth, but they're much more open to it over there. LinkedIn continues to be a cesspool of uh, just villainy and <laughs> subterfuge. Don't use it. Personal marketing. Fake CISO profiles on LinkedIn target Fortune 500s. <laughs> but then good old Krebs dug into it, and it's not just the CISOs. Those were just the first ones to notice. It's a whole uh, company of fake profiles to try to intermingle with the real ones confuse everybody and steal data fishing spear phishing a lot going on because linkedin that's microsoft they've checked out 
security, it's out the window. <laughs> Somebody at Microsoft is interested in those engagement metrics. Look how many new people we've added to LinkedIn, even though those people are all fraudsters. Did your computer ever successfully update behind your back? It did, yeah, yeah. Oh. So it's actually more interesting than that. What happened there was on one computer, apparently I was testing. I didn't ask it to, but it is, I logged in on a website and it associated that with my Microsoft account on that computer. And that computer opted into the Windows beta program, which somehow opted all of my other computers into the Windows beta program. Because we were playing that game. Yeah. That, that was, was the Microsoft game. account. Oh. Yeah. That's the trigger. So as soon as you logged in. It was like, oh, you're participating in the beta program on this computer. And it's like, no, I'm not participating on that computer. It was... Yeah. It's I, like, who would ever have more than one computer? <laughs> I mean, I, we'll try some more of it, I guess. But were you guys as disappointed and grounded as I was? Yeah, I didn't yeah. think that game was great. It, it's not... Like, that's what's weird about it. It's like, it's not awful, but it just feels like it has no soul. It's not doing anything new in the survival no genre. No personality. I hate yeah. the kids. Well, I want the spiders to win. You don't, well, you don't like kid protagonists as a rule. But that, you know, there could be charismatic kids. Those are not. No. Anyway, we got Victor Seitz here. Doesn't exist. He is not <laughs> from not Chevron. Real not real. And Google trusts LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Also, uh, here we go. Marianne Robles. No, sorry. She doesn't work at Exxon. Really hitting the oil companies here. Also, Cybercrime Magazine just went with these and published an article on <laughs> fake news. <laughs> Disgusting. You know what? That would have never happened to Kyle Wiggers. <laughs> he does his research. High quality. I love this one because this is going to be an arms race. And you know that Google is working on this right now. Yep. They're like, no, we got to fix that. We're going to use a, a GAN to generate different airway tubes for our robots to use to simulate. Deepfake audio has a tell. Researchers use fluid dynamics to spark artificial imposter voices. So a picture being worth a thousand words has never been more true than this article. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So when you speak normally, you got all these like little weird differences Folds going on and, yeah. and stuff in here. Whereas the deep fake is just pure Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only a matter of time before the AI is trained. Like I'm sure that the NSA is taking notes here and they're going to fix that with their model. Man, what if you just speak weirdly? And then what if you, you have a smooth, this? what if you have to have a surgery or something? Smooth brain. <laughs> no, it's smooth. Brain. I don't know what it's <laughs> like. Uh, trachea or. Oh, it's something. Yeah. That... Your sinuses, they all play into it. So. Well, they will fix that for sure. Yeah. And I'm surprised that this was not already the case, but it shouldn't be right. I mean, why this was, was Eastern Kentucky's like national pastime was listening to the scanner. You're too young for this, but there was a time when those scanners could pick up the wireless telephones. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I vaguely recall a court case where some of these were encrypted and the Supreme court found that that was, that was somehow unconstitutional because it, prevented the public from keeping an eye on the police force. Like the police force had no reasonable expectation that those communications wouldn't be logged and recorded and blah, 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 as long as the public wasn't interfering with it. Well, they disagree. I think it's like from the seventies. They disagree wholeheartedly. The New York police department considers using encryption to block public from radio scanner broadcasts. My aunt and uncle are going to be devastated. There must be no evidence of our crimes. Uh, it's amazing how many cops get caught doing bad stuff on the body cam. Oh, I guess yeah. you just get used to it eventually. Although while it's running, it vibrates every like Just to remind minutes. you, yeah. yeah. Like, oh yeah, it's still running. So yeah, they, uh, not just them, there's a bunch of cities and they're mostly big cities who are looking to get rid of this. Now Gizmodo says it's bad because of protests, but I think it's just bad. Yeah. Like why do we need to, to, to piecemeal it out. And Papa John's, uh, this explains why Papa John's website performs so poorly, <laughs> but I'm afraid they are not alone here. Yeah. No. Papa John sued for wiretap spying on a website, mouse clicks and keystrokes. When tracking hits your head like a big pizza pie, that's a priority. Someone was really <laughs> proud of that sub headline. That's excellent. I love that. 
Yeah, so I've got some bad news. Basically, every U.S. marketing agency has loaded this exact same crap on every single website that has more than a hundred thousand dollar budget a year. And then they email us, and they're like, "How come the site's <laughs> running slow?" Also, keep That'll in mind it. while you're using that site, and they're tracking everything except your password because they already have it. Although sometimes they make a mistake and track your password. We've definitely seen where the analytics software was capturing people's passwords surreptitiously because. We, we, we've seen that at least twice that I can think of. And it was like, what are you doing, marketing agency? But even if they're not doing that, Google and Microsoft <laughs> via the spell checker are. Yeah. So. Well, that's fixed now, supposedly. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I trust that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's government and security. So like Clicktail and Blue Kai and Snowplow. Snowplow with misconfiguration and see what else. What are the other really big ones? You can do it with, it's it's harder to do it if you're entirely in the Google ecosystem. They really go out of their way to stop you from accidentally capturing passwords. But a lot of people always want to add things on top of it. Mm. Sometimes and the open source analytics packages also get sucked into this. And the data mining from that too. Yeah. yeah. That's just, they, they know so much. If you hovered over something a little too long, they're like, oh yes, we will sell them that by the end of the year. Actually this, this exact thing, like the, it's funny because it's like quick, nobody send the register Oracle's internal marketing stuff for blue Kai Because if you get the sales presentation for blue Kai, these are bullet points in the sales presentation about how amazing it is that they can see the mouse clicks and keystrokes. I'm, I'm imagining, you know, that like really sweaty picture of Papa John. <laughs> I'm imagining that, but he's like looking at your data. <laughs> he probably had no idea. Oh, that, I'm sure. Like, I don't he, think he's not even involved anymore. But even when he was, I, he probably didn't understand things on this level. Yeah. But, like the website was just this thing that he didn't quite understand. He's just sweating all over it. <laughs> all right. Well, Oops. But, oh, oh, that's it though. We'll see you guys whenever. Bye. Tomorrow. Whenever. Business, tomorrow. <laughs> Business news. Q3 is not even over and we've already got doom and gloom from a you bunch of You have to subscribe and click the bell so that way they know every time we release a video. Okay, bye. Bye.